welcome to the Every Nation Dorado Sermon of the Week. We hope you enjoy this message. Hello everybody and welcome once again to our online platform. It's always a joy to be together with you on this YouTube channel. If this is your first time, we want to invite you to please subscribe and also to like to the this, uh, this message, switch on the notification button. We are sharing messages every week on this channel that are enlightening your life and, and blessing you and giving you revelation concerning God. And so uh, we want to invite you to share that also with uh, friends and family. Well, today we continue with our series that we started a few weeks ago called Set Apart Wealth and Finances. And this has been a tremendous series. We've been talking about something that is as practical as wealth and finances and bringing out the spiritual elements of it that we actually deal with on a daily basis. And what's amazing is we've received so many testimonies of people uh, that have been getting breakthroughs in the area of their finances, in the area of wealth, in the area of debt cancellation, in the area of just financial miracles. So we're excited that God is confirming his word. And what we want to do is really uh, give you a revelation of what God's word has to say in this area so that your faith will be in the word of God and so that your, your life will reflect the purposes and the promise of God. I'm going to pray for us and then we'll get into our message. Father, we thank you so much that we're able, Lord God, to receive revelation from your word. And today we come with an open heart and we pray, Lord, that you will teach us and show us your word and cause us, Father God, to walk in them in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. So we started off a couple of weeks, several weeks ago, uh, talking about how you need to choose who you're going to worship. And when you approach finances, it's not a matter that you approach with neutrality. You choose first who you will worship, and then you approach the matter with that disposition. And so we, we taught them very clearly that you can't worship God and money. You have to choose to worship God. And the worship uh, starts because of the fact that we trust it. Either you trust in God or you trust in money. The two are, are, are able to operate together, but you have to start with one foundation. And obviously we advise that that is uh, the Lord. All these messages are online. You can follow through and get them uh, there. Then the second week we spoke about how God is a wealthy king and we are his children, so the implication of nobility and, and royalty. Then the third week we spoke about the mindset of stewardship. The fourth week we started off with this three-part uh, uh, segment on blessings and miracles. Next week uh, we will continue in the area of financial bondages and generational poverty. And thereafter, we'll talk about honoring God in the areas of work and giving and tithes and offerings and seeds. And thereafter, we'll talk about family finance, God's way. We'll show you practically how to structure the finances of your family according to a biblical way. Then the ninth week, we'll talk about the warnings surrounding wealth and riches because this is an area that is not to be toyed with. Many people have pierced them th themselves through with many sorrows because of their greed in this area. And then uh, in the last week, we'll talk about how to pray for finances. Now, we started off uh, two, three weeks ago on the theme of blessings and miracles. And we explained what blessings are, the pronouncements and the spoken word that brings about an empowerment to prosper. We spoke about miracles, how it is a suspension of the natural order in order to bring about God's will and purposes. We said in the first principle that God is the author of blessings and miracles. Secondly, that God can provide for us either by blessings or by miracles. And then we spoke how God's children are blessed uh, from Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, that we are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. And then last week we went into how, how these things work practically, how you work the blessing, how you work the miracles uh, with faith. We spoke about the importance of being born again, the importance of seeking first the kingdom of God, and obviously you enter the kingdom of God through being born again. Then we went to Second Peter speaking about how God's divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us into his excellence and into his glory, and he has given us these great and precious promises, and by them we become partakers of the divine nature. 
escaping the corruption that is in the world through lust. And so it is important that we understand this. And then we also spoke about how we need to add certain things to our faith to make it effectual. This is very important. This message is online um, um, uh, on, on YouTube on our channel, and you'll be able to, to find it there. Now, today, I just want to elaborate concerning how uh, the practical aspects of how you work the blessing and uh, uh, the miracles in your life through faith. And uh, the, the critical uh, agent of this experience is the Holy Spirit. This is awesome because we spoke last week how we become partakers of the divine nature through the promises of God. And uh, Jesus become, became a partaker of our human nature so that we could become partakers of the divine nature. It was a substitution that came through the gospel the promise of God. And what's amazing is that uh, promises are legit, that they are actual, actually substantial depending on who makes the promise. And so because God cannot lie, promises are as good as the actual thing. And so if God gives you a promise, you can bank on it. It is a done deal. And that's why the promises of God are so reliable. We spoke about Joseph and how he was a prosperous man, even though he was sold as a slave, and then how God was blessing even the house of his employer as a result of the blessing. Then we went on to elaborate the fact that um, God works through his favor in your life, and he makes grace abound to you so that you're able to be generous, self-sufficient, etc. So this message is online um, on, uh, on our YouTube channel. Now, uh, I just want to focus on a, a short aspect, and then we'll pray. And this is specifically in relation to blessings and miracles. And we taught that, you know, there are many people that want to move to another country because things are not well in their country and all. And we saw how God spoke to Isaac and he said to him, no, stay, remain in Canaan where there was a famine and sow in the land and I will bless you. And so we spoke about how the blessing is on you that you don't have to go to a certain territory or place to experience the blessing, that it is the blessing of the Lord that makes rich. It is the blessing of the Lord that empowers you to prosper, regardless of the place where you are. So this is very important, and we must have this understanding. And on Sunday in the service, I was uh, sharing this analogy about how the blessing follows you. Uh, uh, David said in Psalm 23, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And so uh, I was walking around the church uh, building and having someone follow me, two gentlemen following me to illustrate how goodness and mercy will follow you, will pursue and overtake you. And I was trying to evade them and I was trying to escape them, but goodness and mercy keep following. Why? Because the idea that God wants to communicate is that the blessing is on you. This is a wonderful testimony of the New Testament, that the blessing comes on you and remains on you. Now, as we become partakers of the divine nature, how then does God help us in the practical day to day to materialize the promises of God in our lives? Even though blessings and, and goodness and mercy are following us, how does it actually come into fruition? And the key here is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. If we are saying, according to 2 Peter, that we are partakers of the divine nature. The Holy Spirit in man is what makes man a partaker of the divine nature. This is awesome. That Christ in you, that the Spirit of God in you, that the same way that Jesus said in, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you will receive power, you will receive dunamis when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses even to the ends of the earth. How were they going to do it? They didn't have the money. They didn't have the resources. They didn't have airplanes. They didn't have cell phones. They didn't have... How were they going to share the gospel all over the world? Through the Holy Spirit. Now, how does it work? Let's, let's read here in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. This is a promise of God that is cited by the Holy Spirit, who is the author of the Scriptures. And it says that all scripture is inspired by God. And it says here in verse 5, keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, 
I will never leave you nor forsake you so that we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me? All right, so this is a very practical, very practical scripture. It says you don't have to worry about money. Keep your life free from the love of money. Why? Because you have the Holy Spirit. What will the Holy Spirit do in my life? He will provide everything that you need. Uh, the Apostle Paul said, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. The spirit of glory is the Holy Spirit. He comes into our lives and with him comes all the resources of the kingdom of God into our lives, into our body. The Bible says that, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and abides with you. And so he says, keep your life free from the love of money. Keep it from, uh, from covetousness. Be content with what you have. Why? Because God will never leave you nor forsake. So this is the picture that in the same way that those gentlemen were following me around the room, the same way goodness and mercy follows you around the room, is the same way that the Holy Spirit also pursues and follows you. We made an illustration that even when we go to places where we ought not to go, the Holy Spirit cannot deny himself. He cannot change his word. He does not uh, declare a thing and alter what has gone out of his mouth. He said he will never leave us nor forsake us. So if we go to a certain place that even the Holy Spirit doesn't want us to go, but we take him there because he dwells in our body, he will be with us there. We made the example of going to the club. And so the guy is in the club and the Holy Spirit is there speaking to him. And giving him instruction and saying, why are you here? Come on, let's get out of here. We shouldn't be here. And the Holy Spirit will call someone, will speak to another believer to call him on the phone. And that person will call him on the phone and say, where are you? And he says, no, I'm at the club, just hang out, I'm coming. And that person will be inspired by the Holy Spirit and I'm coming to get you now. And he comes to and pulls him out. And that the Holy Spirit is able to speak to you even in the places which is not church related. Like in your business, like in your business meeting, the Holy Spirit can be there with you Say, don't sign this deal. Consider, read page five, <laughs> that you will begin to see that someone is trying to scam you because of the warning of the Holy Spirit. He is the, 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 the wisdom of God. He is God, the Spirit of God, coming into your life and giving you the advantage. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake. So when we talk about the blessing and the miracle of God working in your life, it is working as an, and particularly works when you are sensitive to the Holy Spirit. The Word of God says that those who are led by the Spirit, these are the sons of God. And so let's look here at just certain elements of what the Holy Spirit will do in your life based on John 14 and John chapter 16. This is before Jesus is betrayed in the book of John, in the gospel of John. He actually speaks to his disciples and he gives them clarity that you will not leave them as orphans. You will not leave them alone. He will come to them. This is awesome. He will come to them. And this is in John 14. Now we're looking here at John chapter 14, verse 16 to 17 says that he will send the helper. The word is the advocate or the parakletos, which means the one who comes alongside you to protect you, to defend you, to, to represent you like an advocate comes. And so you have a helper in your lives. So in the area of wealth and finances, this is without question still the case. Consider what happened with Isaac when God's spirit said to him, stay in Canaan, don't go to Egypt. I've got a plan for you. When God's Spirit was speaking to Joseph and giving him revelation concerning the, the Pharaoh's dream and the interpretation and the strategy for Egypt so that they would not be for prey and be victimized by the drought. And Egypt became a superpower and Joseph was promoted to the top of the nation because of the revelation of the Holy Spirit. It says in the last days, I'll pour up my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will dream dreams. Your old men will see visions. And so, or your old men will dream, dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. We see that the Holy Spirit materially is involved in our earthly lives. 
Why? Because God didn't just make promises to us that will one day be fulfilled in heaven. No, he made those promises, but he said that even in this life, we will begin to be partakers of the divine nature. How? Through the tasting and the experiencing of the indwelling Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of wisdom, hallelujah. And so he says the spirit will be a helper and an advocate. A parakletos. Then John 14 verse 17 says, He will be the spirit of truth who will lead you into all truth. I mean, you're about to go into a business meeting. You're doing research concerning a certain area of science. The spirit of truth is able to give you revelation. It gives you the advantage. How then do you think that the blessing and the miracles of God will not work in your life if you have the Holy Spirit and if you are listening to the Holy Spirit. Then in John 14, 17, it says he will be with you. That the, the Holy Spirit is the indwelling presence of God, not outside of you, in you, to be able to clearly speak to you, direct you, to give you impressions, to guide you. And then the next thing that he will do, John 14, 26, is he will teach you. He is your teacher. Oh, yes. In what area? In all areas. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the creator. He was there in the beginning when God said, let there be light. It, it was by the Spirit of God that all things were made and created. He is the executive member of the Trinity. He is the one that fulfills the, the will and the desire of the Father, effectually, materially. And even in the Old Testament, it was when the Spirit of God came upon the prophet, when the Spirit of God came upon the king, when the Spirit of God came upon the people, that miraculous things happened, that blessings were fulfilled, destiny was unlocked. And so the same Spirit that was on Samson, the same Spirit that was on David, the same Spirit that was on Moses, is the same Spirit that was on Jesus. Jesus, and it's the same spirit that dwells in you and will never leave you nor forsake you and distinguishes your life and makes your life amazing and makes your life to manifest the blessings and the miracles. What else will the Holy Spirit do? He will remind you of the things that Jesus taught according to John 14 verse 26. He will remind you of what Jesus taught. Then, verse 16, you know the Holy Spirit will many times remind you not only of what Jesus taught, the scriptures that you need in that specific moment, he will remind you of things of the past that you need to remember. Maybe you're in a certain meeting and the Holy Spirit pops into your mind a memory that actually brings a certain solution into the meeting. Maybe he reminds you of something that you need to address with your wife. He reminds you of something that you need to address with your child, with your cousin. Amazing how the Holy Spirit works. Then we move over to John 16. It says that he will convict the world. John 16 from verse 8 to 11. He will bring conviction of sin, of righteousness, and judgment. He will convict you when you do wrong. He will make you convinced that this is not right and, and lead you in repentance. He will convince you of your righteousness that you have in Christ. He will convict you of the judgment to come, that the enemy has been judged, and that you can stand strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit will make all these things effectual in your life. And then, uh, John 16, verse 13, he will lead you into all truth. Jesus said to his disciples, I want to tell you so much more, but you are not ready. You are not ready, but when the Holy Spirit comes, he will lead you into all truth. And the Holy Spirit has come and is leading us into all truth. Hallelujah. Then what else? He will speak what he hears, John 16 verse 13. He won't speak of his own. He's not an independent spirit from the Father. So he will bring the will of God to pass in your life. The will of God, the Father in your life is being affected by the Holy Spirit. What else will he do? He will declare the things to come. John 16, verse 13, he will give you the ability to see the future. This is awesome. This is a prophetic ability that every believer, when it says when the Spirit of God comes upon us, we will prophesy that we will be able to know what is coming next week and prepare ourselves and position ourselves, hallelujah, and set ourselves. How will you not prosper with this kind of advantage? Ask Isaac, ask Joseph. Ask Daniel, 
and the Spirit of God has been neglected by many believers. Many of us have lived with him in our homes and ignored him, never speak to him, never ask him, never, you know, when we are in trouble, we would more quickly pick up our phone and try and find a, a destiny helper of some kind before we have gone to the helper, the Holy Spirit. And he will, he will show you things to come. Then he will glorify Jesus. John 16 verse 14, he will glorify Jesus. He will glorify Jesus. That means that he will make your life such that people look at you and say, wow, Christ is a lot. And he will also teach you amazing thing, things about Jesus so that your relationship with Jesus is on the next level. And then what else? He will disclose what belongs to Jesus. John uh, 16 verse 15. Why, why is this? Because we are joint heirs with Christ. He said that whatever belongs to the Son, we are partakers, we are sharers with the, with the Son. Because we have been adopted into the family of God, we are also heirs. Because we are children, we are also heirs and joint heirs with Christ. And it's the Holy Spirit that tells us what Jesus has because that's what we have. Hallelujah. What an advantage. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So for, for those of you who are still not persuaded, let me give you a last scripture here so that we get an indication of, uh, of how to understand this. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 through 13. It says, for who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person which is in him? So also no one comprehends or understands the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Yes. So he's saying, who knows the mind and the thoughts of a person? Only the spirit of that person. Who knows the thoughts and the mind of God? The spirit of God knows the thoughts and the mind of God. Then he goes and he pivots and he says something remarkable. He says in verse 12, Now we have received not the spirit of the world that gives us the mind of the world, but the spirit who is from God that gives us the mind and the thoughts of God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. Ooh. <laughs> We have received the Spirit of God so that we may know what God has freely given us. So the Holy Spirit is in you to reveal to you God's plan for your life and the resources that relate to that and everything that you need for that. And then he says, and we impart this wisdom, eh? we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit. Look at the construction that the Spirit can teach. This is awesome. I mean, what is it that you want to know? I know that we spend so much time, resources, energy in learning things, whether it's from school, university, master's degree, PhD, YouTube, Coursera, Udemy, Whatever it is that we take courses, we read books. But the Spirit of God who knows all things, who knows the mind of the omniscient God, has come to dwell with you and has said, I will be your teacher. There's a saying that people use, they say, when the, when the, student, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And this is indeed true when it comes to the Holy Spirit. Many of us are ignorantly running away from the voice of God. But he wants to show you what he has for you. He wants to show you and teach you and reveal to you. How, now, how does he do it? Interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. He does it by the scriptures. So even today, as you're listening to me, this is the Holy Spirit teaching you something. That if you can catch this, I'm telling you, you will set yourself at an advantage above your peers, above your colleagues, above everyone else, because you are going to the Spirit of God and saying, Lord, teach me. Is it in your marriage you want to prosper? The Holy Spirit can teach you. Is it in your business you want to prosper? The Holy Spirit can teach you. Is it in ministry you want to prosper? The Holy Spirit can teach you. Is it in relationships you want to prosper? The Holy Spirit can teach you. Is it in your career you want to prosper? The Holy Spirit can teach you. It doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit will say, no, don't do your degree, just come to me. 
No, he will send you to do your degree, but in the process of doing your degree, he will say, study this, look at that, focus on this, look at this. He created the whole thing that we are studying there. And so he is the one who has the wisdom of God. Come on, can we accept this? <laughs> and begin to give the Holy Spirit the credit that he needs. Oh, Pastor Chris, I know I have the Holy Spirit, but I can't hear his voice. Then ask him, Lord, I can't, I don't know how to hear your voice. Teach me. Mm -hmm. Jesus promised he will send the Holy Spirit. You will not be left as an orphan. He will send the Spirit of truth. He will send the one who is your helper, your paracletos. He has a duty. <laughs> he has a duty to be your guardian, your supervising governor, to help you. It is in his best interest for your life to shine. When your life shines with holiness and purity and blessing and favor, then Jesus is glorified because that's why Jesus died, to bring you into excellence and glory. We saw that, and we become partakers of the divine nature, and it happens through the promises of God. How? By means of the Holy Spirit's ministry in your life. You know, I've got so many examples where the Holy Spirit has told me, do this, do that, and I did it, and I saw the hand and this is not just for church and for pastors, it's for everyone, young and old, black, white, yellow, red, and purple, wherever you come from, that if you receive the Holy Spirit, we, and He speaks to you within different ways, but the Word of God shows us how He operates. If we will only give time to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, today, teach me. I'm going to read my Bible, pray, speak to me, read me. I'm going to listen to teachings and... The Holy Spirit does this in various ways, especially in the teaching ministry of the preachers and the pastors and the apostles and the, and, the, and the ministers and the prophets and all, but especially with the Word. You learn the Word and then you use that together with the teaching that you're getting and the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, so next week we're going to continue on the area of financial bondages and spiritual curses in the area of finances and all. But it's so important, I believe this part, we had to do three parts of blessings and miracles because this is a practical area that people need to get a handle on because tomorrow is Monday and you need to be able to work this in a very practical way. Now, my prayer for you is if you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit that you will receive right now as you are there, pray with me, say, Lord Jesus, you said you will baptize me with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Right now, come Holy Spirit and fill me. Lord, baptize me with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Receive the Holy Spirit right where you are. Begin to encounter Him in dreams and visions, revelations. Let your ears be open, let your eyes be open. Begin to see in the Spirit, hear spiritual matters. In Jesus' name, receive the gift of tongues, praying in the Spirit, and growing in the things. Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. If you're there and you're not born again, you have not received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, pray with me to receive the Lord, and you will be transformed right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today, just as I am. I'm a sinner, Lord. I don't deserve anything. But I heard you died for me, for my sins on the cross. And you suffered in my place. And in three days you were raised from the dead. So Lord Jesus, you are alive. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Be my Master. Be my Healer. I repent of my sins. I put my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a new creation from today. I receive a new heart and a new spirit. My sins are forgiven. And I'm born again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you pray that prayer, we believe that salvation has come into your heart. Please do comment in the in the comment section or reach out to us in one of our platforms and the 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 details that you can see here on this on this video. And please. Remember, the Holy Spirit is eager to walk with you and to bless you and to lead you to green pastures 
The Lord is your shepherd. You shall not want. The Holy Spirit is shepherding you. Accommodate him. Uh, remember to listen to him as you would the shepherd. And he will lead you. All right. God bless you. We'll see you soon. And uh, if you're ever in town, please do join us in the service and you'll be blessed for it. So God bless you and we'll, we'll see you soon. Thank you for listening. For any additional information, please visit our website on ianvintuk.org.